Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. Hope you all are doing well. If you have been watching me for some time or even recently, you might know my obsession with plants. And the plants that I have in my apartment are the ones that need the least maintenance. You can see how beautifully this money plant is growing. I had made a video of reporting it in soil from water, I guess a month back, and it is doing well now. I wanted a rearrangement of the plant pots. The one that I kept on the window side was quite huge, so put that down. I guess because of enough sunlight and watering once a week, the leaf is healthy. These were planted a few days back. Unfortunately, this plant that was a kind of shrub, I think, is gone. I will use this pot to plant the zizi plant that you will see in some time. I did mention the name of this plant, I think, in every vlog i have shown this the name of this plant is philodendron burlmarks it grows in plenty and needs watering once a week and in my experience it grows abundantly in soil than when kept in water in case you're placing it in water as soon as the root starts coming out place it in soil and you see it flourish so well And that is the ZZ plan I had placed in water before going on vacation. It's almost two months, I guess. The roots have come from the stem and even from the leaves too. I did bring a few plant cuttings from my home in Kerala and this is one among them. I had put few stories on Instagram yesterday. Hope I see these plants growing well. Feels so good and positive seeing these plants regrowing. The sign of it that it's doing well is so calming and relaxing. The stove I have in this apartment is inbuilt. Sometimes these dark stains do appear and I clean it up with Jif which is a creamy textured cleaning thing. All I do is spread it on the tough stains and leave it for 10 minutes. Later I scrub them and it's all gone. And what's more satisfying than seeing a shiny stove? I love to make it clean and tidy before any major cooking and also later. Kids had insisted on eating homemade broast for some time, so I need to do some preparations ahead before it can be fried. I'm preparing it on Friday, so all the preparations are done on Thursday evening. I took out the chicken pieces that were cut into broast size. It depends on your likes. You can keep it big or small sized. But do the preparations a day before so that the chicken cooks well. Clean the chicken with some salt or vinegar. This helps in getting rid of the extra red color and dirt. Put 
poke each piece with a fork to get the spices deep in. Make sure you clean your kitchen sink after cutting or cleaning any meat or fish or else there will be that raw smell coming and your kitchen will be having that awful smell. I like to use Jif for this reason and this is not a sponsored video of Jif. Even if I use dish liquid the smell remains. So my mom always insists on using Jif for a clean and smell free sink. My microfiber cloths are all in not so good condition. Need to get new ones. Almost all the clothes have faded in color or tone. If you don't get ready-made buttermilk that you need to soak the chicken in, try this way. Add one and a half cup of milk into a big bowl and pour 1 or 2 tablespoons of vinegar or lemon juice. Keep that aside for 3 or 4 minutes. I am using these ingredients for 1.5 kg chicken pieces. This is a ready made flour, bros flour from Lulu and it's Lulu brand again. It's a spicy one that I chose. After some time you can see the milk has curdled. So this is the buttermilk you will need. Into this Add 2 tsp Kashmiri red chilli powder, 1 tsp paprika, 1 tsp cumin powder, around half to 3 4 tbsp salt, half tsp crushed black pepper, some dried herbs like dried basil and oregano and quarter tsp garam masala powder. Mix everything really well. Now soak the chicken pieces into this. Make sure the chicken is completely immersed in the buttermilk. Only a few minutes later I realized that I forgot to add crushed garlic. So I took it out from the refrigerator and mixed in the garlic. Now refrigerate this and let this marinate for at least 8 to 9 hours. Good morning to you all. Today it's Friday. It's off and as usual we wake up a bit late. Not all Fridays do I cook breakfast. We eat out but today I was in the mood to prepare breakfast. And I can't call it breakfast. It was almost brunch time we had it. The non veg we mostly have for breakfast would be eggs, but today used minced meat to prepare lasagna. This isn't the authentic or the usual way of lasagna preparation, it's made in my way. Do try it out and let me know if you liked it. I need to be very careful after I sharpen my knife because it will be super sharp and it can easily cut anything, beat your fingers. But having a blunt knife is even more irritating. Heat some olive oil in a pan. I don't have a medium sized cast iron pan for this but I need one soon because I love the taste of food when cooked in cast iron. The one I have is either tawa to prepare neat dosa or it's a skillet which is quite big and heavy for this purpose.
Anyways, once the onion is soft and sauteed well, add the minced meat and let the color change from pink. Add some salt. Here I used Himalayan pink salt. Then goes in crushed ginger garlic and green chilies. Keep on low flame and let this cook for 5 to 7 minutes. Heat a pan for the bechamel sauce and over to the other side I'll be boiling eggs. Eggs are separate and not for adding to lasagna. Heat some oil and melt 50 grams butter block. I hate when the butter splutters and make a mess on the stove. I couldn't find the lid anywhere so the mess was spreading. If I don't wipe it soon, it will be hard later. To this, instead of all-purpose flour, I used wheat flour. Keep on low flame and cook the flour. Make sure it doesn't get burned. Keep mixing for 2 minutes and then add 2 cups milk. Add some salt and pepper. You may add some herbs if you want and even some cheese. I added 2 tablespoons of mayonnaise. Mix well and let this get semi thick. The meat is almost ready. Meanwhile, this is getting thick. Make sure it's a semi thick texture because as it sits, it will get thicker. This is done now. Turn off the flame and let this cool down a bit. Into the meat goes in coriander powder, turmeric powder, garam masala powder and some cumin powder. Saute till the raw smell of these goes. Then here I added 2 cups of coconut milk. Instead of this, you can add canned tomatoes to make it a bit liquid. I went for not the red color, so added coconut milk. Mix for a minute and this is done. Check salt and add if needed. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. I normally cook the lasagna sheets and then place them. I found these oven ready sheets in Lulu, so bought this and not very impressed with the texture. Next time I will use the pre-cooked method. In an oven proof dish tray, spread some olive oil and spread some of the meat mix at the bottom. This is to make sure that the lasagna sheets don't burn. Now place the sheets. Spread the meat mix again. Then go some of the bashment sauce. Add some cheese. I used mozzarella cheese. And now repeat. Cover it with foil and cook for 35 minutes.
kids will go for lasagna but i am sure my husband will need some kerala cuisine to be happy and so do me had some dosa batter left in the fridge and some moong dal curry that was left over from the dinner last night prepared dosas with this batter After cooking the lasagna for 30 minutes, remove the foil and cook for another 10 minutes till the cheese turns to a nice golden brown color. I'll be shallow frying the fried eggs that will be cut in half. Add some oil in a pan, then mix in some Kashmiri red chili powder, turmeric powder and some salt. Place the eggs this way. I crush some black pepper on top. You may fry it on both sides, but I fry just on the bottom. So that the spices don't burn, I added a glug of water in the center. And that's our Friday brunch. The chicken had been soaking in buttermilk from yesterday. I took out a strainer and placed the chicken pieces in it. Now I will knead this mixture to coat the pieces, but before that, whisk in two eggs. I'm placing this on top so that the extra tips down. Meanwhile, preparing hummus to have along with the roast. This is cooked chickpeas and using canned ones to make it easy. Then goes in tahini which is nothing but sesame paste. Salt, vinegar, or lemon juice and olive oil add some warm water if the chickpeas aren't crushing well but just a little now for the best ingredient to make creamy hummus is ice cubes this is a secret ingredient for this i did get this tip from the comment section so thank you so much whoever had insisted me to use ice cubes for getting creamy hummus I added 4 cubes. This makes hummus super creamy and very tasty. 
spread some olive oil on top and sprinkle some roasted cumin powder place that in the refrigerator until served time to coat the chicken pieces this is the ready made pack but if you don't have this use plain flour and mix some spices which i will provide in the description box so please check that out you don't have to strictly use this flour coat the chicken pieces first in the buttermilk and then in the flour now repeat one more time to get a thick coating I didn't want to get messy hands and that's why I used a tong but it gets a better coating while using your hands. My husband wanted a guilt-free brew so he insisted on trying it out in the air fryer. I tried two pieces to check. If it's good, I'll fry half air fried and half deep fried. Make sure you don't overcrowd the pan while deep frying or else it won't get well cooked. The temperature of the oil slows down if overcrowded with the chicken. Add 2 or 3 pieces maximum if your pan is a medium sized one. Keep the flame medium all time. A high flame will burn the coating and the chicken won't get cooked. A low flame will get the chicken to soak too much oil. Once it's a nice golden brown color, strain and take them out. The air fried one is ready. It is crispy and well cooked. And we shared one piece to see the result. It wasn't bad but then my husband changed his mind to go for deep fried one because deep fried are cooked once in a while at home. Preparing a salad with chunks of watermelon, mango, cucumber. You can cut these into your preferred size. Drizzle some olive oil, some salt and some pepper. Had some olives left in the fridge so added that as well. Mix and chill till served. Had to soak the air fryer before cleaning. It was super hot in the kitchen so I went to take some rest. Carrot and cucumber sticks to dip in the creamy hummus. Had bought pita bread from the store and reheated it just before serving. Steaming makes it even more soft. But I didn't have enough time and kids were feeling super hungry seeing the bruised.
and our dinner for today is ready. Hope you all enjoyed watching today's video. Do try the recipes and share me your feedback. I will see you next time with another vlog. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.